I thought I'd have a go at building this small motor yacht, which was advertised in the January edition of Model Boats of 2023. Um, now, as always, I like to see if I can build these boats as cheap as possible. So there's quite some good instructions in this in the magazine. Plus, they give you um, a free plan, which is not bad, not badly drawn actually. Some of the plans I've had before leave much to be desired, but this is quite a good one. So um, I'm going to try and use up some wild bits of wood on this um, and keep the cost down because you can uh, spend quite a bit of money on buying the wood uh, specifically for it. So what I've done to start with is to photocopy the plan they give you in the magazine and then um, cut up the various profiles which um, you need to form the hull. So each one of those is represents one of the cross members of the, of the hull. You know, what an important thing to notice is that the, on this type of, of construction, they all work to a datum line. Now I made a mistake uh, on a previous model where I've been so used to building kits and you build them from the keel up, but you actually to build this from the other way around. So this goes on the deck on a board and they're all link back to that datum and then you saw off what you don't need uh, at the end. So I've uh, photocopied the plan and um, got the profile out. And what I'm gonna do is stick it on the wood. So then when I cut it out with the on the jigsaw um, attachment, I can see precisely where uh, the line is and it hasn't got distorted by me trying to interpret um, the, the markings across from just scaling the, the drawing off. So that's the next step I'm gonna do is to stick these pieces of, of um, paper onto um, the, the plywood and then we'll start cutting those out. So I'm using a spray adhesive, which is quite good for this, and just spray the boards. Um, I just roughly marked out where the, where the pattern will go, so I don't waste too much spray over the bits that are not important. Okay, so that's that. And now, just a simple job of just laying that on the uh, on the board and just letting that stick. Okay, and then it's a bit easy then just to um, trim around that um, on the jigsaw. Okay, so I've been busy now cutting out each of the sections that go through on the cross side supports by where we pasted the um the pattern onto the onto the plywood so there's more cutting out to do because i've got to cut these openings in here but at the moment i'm just start, starting to plan it out uh, on a baseboard which i've found um a piece of old wood here um, and i've marked out a center line of the uh, down the middle of the, of the boat and each of these are the cross members going across there so you've got one to ten and I just marked using this plan which is two scale full scale and I've marked them up one to ten through there so now what's going to happen is we've got to get some cross pieces of wood to go across so that we can then fix the vertical um, pieces um, as we construct the construct the boat Right, now I've uh, finished uh, cutting up the various cross members, so they've all got um, hollow sections now, so the minimum weight of wood is being used. They've all been put in position, and also the main keel assembly, which goes right from the stern of the, of the boat right up to the bows. That's all um, in position now and glued. Um, we're going to have to do something about this section where the the rudder goes and also the propeller because in the um, magazine although they say you can convert it to have its own inboard engine uh, they didn't do it on their prototype and when you drill through this for the shaft it's going to completely sever the piece of plywood so that's got to be fattened up with some extra ply around the side of it but that's an, uh, an item which I've got to spend a bit more time sorting out. We're making good progress. Um, next thing now is to start chamfering off the sides here so that they profile 
in with the overall side section of the of the um, boat and then we'll put some stringers around to fit into those recesses to strengthen it up and then makes a, a surface which you can fix the side uh, planks of the of the um, boat on. Right now I've now fixed the um, lower skins um, of the hull uh, to the boat frame uh, and you can see it's one of these things where um, you can't have too many clamps because you have to clamp every section down you don't want to do too many pins although I've done pin the top there because you can have to fill those in afterwards but that's fitted in quite well um, that dry now and then we can take it off and uh, gradually build up the other two side skins uh, to complete the uh, profile of the hull right give you a bit of an update where we are now I've fitted all the sides panels onto the um, hull and um, just roughly sanded them back there's a bit of obviously filling um, to do and probably a little bit extra gluing but we've got some side strips to go around here that cover all that up but um, taking shape quite nicely um, and the underside looking good I've drilled the hole through for the prop shaft that's going to be slightly different than the drawings because uh, clearly that was put in as an afterthought on the drawings and not really thought through but we've got a solution to deal with that so I'll update you soon when we've got some decks on and uh, the motors and some control gear in position. Right, so we moved on a bit since I last spoke to you all. Uh, we've now got the um, rudder um, tube in position. I've also uh, pre-fitted the motor so I can get the right position for the propeller shaft uh, and finished off inside here now sanded out i'm just going to give it a coat of um, fiberglass resin which hopefully will completely seal any little holes that we have uh, in the hull and make it completely waterproof so i've had to bring it in doors now because it's a bit cold outside at the moment but uh, it's taking shape and looking uh, looking quite good with further updates um now made the decks ready to be um, installed shortly um, and the roof of the cabin uh, has been made. Uh, the side sections of the cabin have all been fitted in and we've also got the, um, the decking down the side here. Now I've marked the planking because when that's that varnished up it looks quite nice actually and almost looks almost realistic as if it is real planking. Um, this is needed a bit more, this front will need a bit more trimming. I've uh, also got the um, fixings for the metal stay wires which go up to the top of the mast, etc. Starting to do a, a loose fit for some of the equipment, the steering at the back with the servo in position there. Um, got some uh, stop plugs in there for the batteries, the engine mounting and the prop shaft is all in position now uh, so it's just a case what we're going to do now is to um, seal the underside just go and fill in with some uh, car filler any little imperfections on the underside of the hull and then we um, can sand it all down and um, body spray it so what I want to do is then put it in the water just to see if we've got any leaks or not before I start doing a major refit on the deck Well, we're progressing quite well um, with the, the hull and the, the actual boat itself. Um, done the main, um, this has now been um, stuck on the deck. This is the main front deck. Um, I've also done the lining of the planks, which when they're varnished, they look quite good. Um, we've got the cabin roof done. The back section now has been made, which houses all the um, steering servo. And we've got a deck in here. Now, uh, another thing we've got to add in here is probably a seat. It's according to the um, pictures on the boat that we're actually copying from the magazine. Um, and the other thing is I've been working on these side adjusters that will um, tension the main stay wires. So these, I've, um, I found them quite expensive to buy, but I actually made up these myself quite easily. This is just buying a threaded section of um, uh, brass there and two um, 
M4 screws. One I drilled a hole through to take the the um, the wire stanchion, and um, that will bolt onto the side of these clips here. So that wasn't too bad. And um, next thing now is to um, put the mast support on here. We've <coughs> actually um, uh, started to make the the mast, which I'll show you in a second. So here's the mast. Um, it's been made out of a piece of oak. Uh, I didn't quite have the length um, required, so I've spliced it in up here and then also formed that's the point where um, the main um, the jib sail gets supported from. So I've made a support clip as well, which fits in. So the whole thing will go together like that. Okay. And, um, and then I've also done the boom, which um, will bolt onto here. And uh, and then we've got the boom. So um, taking pretty good shape. The next thing now is to start um, fitting out the um, all the radio equipment. We've got the mar the motors in position now, but I'm going to put the the uh, server to control the sails, uh, speed controller, and batteries etc. and receiver, and then test all that out really, um, and then start painting. So watch your space. Oh, it's time for a bit of an update. Um, got all the radio control gear in now. There's the uh, there's the receiver over there. Um, motor as we've seen before. Servo to control the the uh, sails. Um, that's the speed controller for the motor. And the back here we've got the um, steering um, server. And I'll just. Um, Switch it on now and uh, just show you it all working really. And um, the actual steering system at the back all working well. And um, and then the actual pulling the sails in from the that servo there. Okay, and I'll just show you. I've started to do the varnishing now, which is looking good. Um, so these are the, the bow of the of the yacht and the mast now all up in position um, boom there ready wants to be fixed in with the sails for the main sheet and uh, got some windows to put in on the cabin probably going to leave this top section here all painted in varnish because that looks quite smart and then we're going to have a, a gloss grey and a red bottom on the side so um, all the decks look good. Door into the cabin and uh, the area that's housing all the steering system. And I think I'm going to probably saw that little lip thing coming out, which was I've had to change the, the way in which the the rudder has been assembled. So um, that will get tidied up. So we're getting nearly to the point of the year we need to finish, but I've got to make the sails now. That's the next big thing. And also got to make the queue, which um, involves a bit of lead work in there. So we'll see how it goes. Well, this is one of the final updates for the building of this boat. It's pretty well complete now. Um, you see that we've um, made some sails and the sails have been made from old um, drawing uh, film from plans. Um, it's a bit uh, novel because you can see the outlines of the building designs on the sails which is a bit different but nevertheless it was all free these are old drawings but from about 50 years old now so there's no there's a, no actual purpose to keep them um the colors slightly changed on the um hull and i decided to go for white on the side and blue a bit more striking and perhaps going for gray which i was planning to do at one time um built the keel you can see there's a keel one and a half pounds lead keel on the bottom uh, that was interesting to build a laminating um, sheet lead and um, resin it together and bolting it so it's all firmly held in position and then it's bolted up inside the um, under, in, inside the deck under the cabin um, this guy here we call Edgar he's not really a sailor but he fits the right size and we let him hold the ropes occasionally just to make him feel important You'll see all the um, 
connectors on the side which I made because I've heard they were quite expensive to buy some of those about six to eight pounds ago and it can soon add up when you need about four four of them um, at the top we've made a, a bargey which will reflect uh, the wind direction and more important also we've got the stand now which is um, holds it better because you need to um, keep the keel clear uh, clear at the bottom and you don't really want to keep assembling it at the pond side so it's all can go it's not a particularly heavy boat so all that remains now really is um we're going to do another test in a, in a tank just to make sure that it all balances level um and then it's a case of going out on the pond and seeing uh, how well she sails but we pick a day which isn't too um isn't too arduous, as I might lose her. So, um, but I think it's going to be quite a stable boat actually. It's got a bit of weight to it. Um, the sails aren't all that large considering the, uh, the size of it. So I think it should go quite well, but not a, it's not a bad um, weather type boat. And of course what we've got is the secret of the engine, which um, was never done uh, from the prototype, which was put in the magazine. Just switch the controller on from down here um, and inside the cabin here I'll switch there which that comes up so bit of propeller down there forward and and uh backwards and we've got the um the rudder turning one way and the other it's all working well and then finally the, i better take this out of his hand because otherwise poor Edgar here might lose his fingers but um we've got the different um basically two main settings really fairly sort of like um tight tightly hauled in and then what i would suggest is a beam reach really sophistication as we're going to have on this particular boat but um, yeah, no, so it looks quite good. And in all, it's only cost me about £60 for all the bits and pieces. The rest of it, I did scraps of wood and other bits of things that I didn't really um, have to buy. So I'll give you an update once we get it in the water. And, and that'll be it. Job done. Right, now to the left, just a touch, just a touch, down to the left, oh you're lost. It's got some wind so you've had it now. Oh, missed, got my problem Rog, you went in front of me. Okay, um, like all uh, models, when you build them, there's always things afterwards you think, I could have done that better. And there's a few modifications which we've now done to this boat, which I think is worth just sharing with everybody. First of all was the um, the controller or the, the radio control system. We, had, we bought one which was four channels, which sounds enough, but only the two of the channels were on joggle sticks. The others were like switches. So it meant that we couldn't... Um, position the sails. They're rather on or off like that, which is a bit restrictive. So what I did, I had a, a controller transmitter from a previous model, which is a six channel one, which goes, uh, got um, two lots, four, four channels which are on joggle sticks. And I bought an extra receiver, which is over here, which we've positioned in the boat and then converted this boat now to a six channel. Though we're going to use three of the channels, 
it is now working as a six channel. So I'll just um, demonstrate how um, one of the other things we did, which is probably worth sharing with you, is that the, the way the sails were configured before, it relied on the, the movement from left to right, okay, which is about 50 mil. We've now configured it so that it does it twice that amount, the way we've put the pulleys, and I'll just switch this on and demonstrate that to you. So, oops. All right, let's see. So I'll just put the sail under load. Oops, just get back to this. Normally it would be under load like that. So, what this does now is, when you pull it right across, that's pulled right in. As it goes out, because it's configured in that way, it's got twice the travel, which is quite useful. And of course, now, instead of having a, a definite on and off, we can adjust it by the um, joggle stick on here and you get the gradual movement, which is brilliant. Um, as far as the motor works, this works in the same way. Oops, no joggle stick, so forward and, re and reverse. And, and like but the other thing, what I wanted to just share with you was um, the rudder mechanism. We had it originally up with two um, uh, pulley drives, two, two, um, I don't know what they go out the way here. Yeah, I had, um, I, had two, I had two connections, one to there and one to there. And that obviously gives a lot of strength, but it didn't seem to give a lot of movement. So. What we've done now is just put one on and pulled it in a bit it was out there before now pulled it in closer so we've got a really good movement so if you look underneath that rudder is going right round now and it's given a bit more response that we wanted because the other one was a bit slower and didn't really go fast enough round so this we can really uh, shift the boat round especially if you're changing tack and you want to move it pretty fast round so they're the um they're the mods we did worth sharing with you i mean it wasn't um, absolutely critical but um it's just improved it a bit more okay i'm glad you enjoyed that hopefully